three elements in particular define Dowson's poem as belonging to the decadent movement. Its perversity, its love of excess, and its egotism. Perversity is evident in the way the poet obsesses over the fact that he cannot banish the memory of his former love, Sinora, while he is indulging himself with his new one. Desolate and sick he may be, and as he repeatedly assures us, but it's quite clear the emotional torment itself gives him some sort of perverse pleasure. And while we know nothing about Sinara, we do know the current lover is a prostitute, from his mention of her bought red mouth, a detail that adds to the decadent atmosphere of the poem. Is Sinara herself gone away or dead? We don't know, despite the fact that the poet addresses the poem to her in a strange attempt at reassurance that, despite his constant involvement with other women, he has been faithful to her in his fashion, a claim that also entails a certain amount of perversity. That perversity leaks into the second characteristic of decadent poetry, that is, the love of excess. The poet recounts almost with pride his indulgence in excessive emotionalism and behaviour. He has flung roses riotously with the throng, he boasts, and danced and cried for madder music and for stronger wine, all to expunge the memory of Sinara, and all in vain. The picture he paints is of someone approaching a state of mania or hysteria. Holding these two elements, perversity and excess, together is the glue of egotism. The whole poem is a hymn to the poet's self and his own psychopathy. It's his emotionalism that is at the centre of it, his psychological state that is paramount, his conflicted response to the dilemma that drives the poem. That's why we know nothing about Sinara apart from an idea of her pallor, suggested by his description of her pale lost lilies, a contrast with the red mouth of his concubine and the roses flung riotously. And just as we are told nothing about either the prostitute or the throng he goes drinking with, the structure of the poem reinforces each of these elements. Every fourth line takes us back to his sense of desolation, and every sixth line hammers home his guilty justification of broken faith. Every line, apart from the fifth, is a twelve-syllable French Alexandrine, which draws the speaking voice out longer than the usual English pentameter. This helps give the poem its slightly breathless feel, a sense of emotion being stretched almost to the limit. The fifth line always reverts to the more common pentameter and pulls the movement of the stanza up slightly, reminding the poet of unpleasant reality before it plunges back into the Alexandrine and the poet's self-justifying indulgence. The repetitive structure emphasises the obsessive and excessive nature of the poet's egotism. To round off this piece, here are a few extra bits of information. The title is taken from a poem by the great Latin poet Horace. Literally translated, it means, I am not as I was under the reign of the good Sinara. Dowson is thus placing himself in a long poetic tradition, albeit one updated for the 19th century. Sinara, as your search on Wikipedia will reveal, is also a genus of thistle-like plants, most notably the artichoke. And Dowson, despite his dissolute life and early death, he died at the age of 32 from TB, had a sense of humour, as evidenced in a letter to a friend, in which he wrote, Absinthe makes the tart grow fonder. <laughs>